Hey guys, so as most of you know, I am a homeschool mom, but I thought that this would be a great time of the year to talk about how I go about doing it or how we do it in our family, since it is uh, back to school time for most people. Um, because we're homeschoolers, we just pretty much do school year round. We don't really do a break. We just do like our own breaks whenever, whenever it's convenient for us. For example, like for a holiday or a family trip. Um, I knew since, I was pregnant with my first that I wanted to homeschool my kids and that I didn't feel that public school or even private school was an option. I can go into how I came to that decision um, in another video if you guys would like. Just let me know and I would be happy to share that with you. And um, But for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to tell you how we do it, what that lifestyle is like. Some people would consider what we do, um, some people call it unschooling, although I hate that word because to me unschooling sounds kind of like you're trying to re like reverse schooling or undo something and I'm not trying to do that exactly um, but we don't have as much structure as a lot of homeschoolers do typically homeschoolers they have a set curriculum and they do their work um, basically like the same way that you would at a school but you're doing it at home and a lot of times parents decide to homeschool their kids for safety reasons or for you know maybe personal reasons maybe it's like a personal you know like with the lifestyle that maybe their parents have depending on their careers maybe it, maybe they have to do a lot of moving or you know it could be for personal reasons um, I know a lot of Christian people don't want their kids going to school and there's certain things that they don't want them learning or certain things they don't want them to ex be exposed to I'm not Christian but um, there are things that I, you know, basically like behaviors that I don't want my kids picking up from other kids whose parents maybe are not as in, very involved in their lives. Um, I remember whenever I was going to school as a child there I was exposed to all types, which, you know, can be a good thing. But if they're too young to be able to um, handle bullies, for example, you know, it's like I, I want to be a little bit more in control of that since they're so young and um, they get their socializing elsewhere but uh, we just we do our schooling at home and um, I've tried doing a set curriculum and I found that that did not work for my daughter who's seven um, and so that's why I wanted to take a much more freestyle approach to educating her and uh, my eldest my 10 year old he actually gave public school a fair shake he did that for a couple of years and uh, we just all decided that that would, it would be best for him to be homeschooled and he's really enjoying it. He benefits a lot from structure. Um, but we decided this year to um, try, you know, to try to try it more freestyle, like how we're doing with my daughter and see how he likes it. Um, we've only been doing it for a few days now this way. Um, and he's really, really enjoying it. And he says he likes it even better than how he was doing it before. So before they were both on K-12, which is an online school, and it counts as a public school because it's publicly funded, so it is free, and um, and you just do all your work on the computer at home. And um, for him, that worked out really well. And for my daughter, it just it just didn't. She's she she can't take all that kind of structure at you know at this age. She's you know got that entrepreneurial spirit. And, uh, you know, we just decided that we were going to support her in that and that we would have a little bit less structure. So I'm going to show you guys exactly what it is that we are doing and what our plans are for the year. I'm going to show you the different um, products and programs that we use and some tips that I have. Real quick before I get into those products, I want to show you what's been powering me through my day. This week, I've been all about this coffee from Expedition Roasters. It's called Ghoulish Delights, and it is cinnamon bun flavored. It is uh, Haunted Mansion themed. Um, I'm not sure if I said yet. It's by Expedition Roasters. I really love this brand. There's three coffee brands that I love and will try to, I try to avoid like all other coffees unless it's an emergency. But um, yes, this one, Expedition Roasters. Bones Coffee and Burial Grounds Coffee. So you'll see me talk about those a lot on here. And every time I find I try out a new flavor, I always make sure that I put that either, I'll either dedicate a video to it. Oh, that can be a little boring to have a movie, a video just about coffees. But from now on, I think I'm just going to kind of feature them in my videos as I go. Um, so yeah, so this is what I've been up to this week. I absolutely love it. This is a really 
good, full flavor. I definitely taste it like cinnamon bun, but it also has a, a more specifically fall spicy taste to it. Almost like pumpkin spice, but not quite. It's delicious. I highly recommend it. And look at the bag art. It's so cute. I love all the details that this person puts into their, um, to their bags. It says, Ghoulish Delight is a simply haunting roast that is sure to please even the most dreary mortals. The sweet aroma of cinnamon and vanilla will fill and warm the air of even the most chilling home. Top it off with whipped cream for a sinful treat that is to die for. I don't add whipped cream to my coffee. I add creamer and it's really good like that. Um, the other one that I got from Expedition Roasters, this one's also good, although not as great as that one. Um, this is also Haunted Mansion themed. Happily Never After. It, it is New Orleans Praline flavor and so we got like the wallpaper from inside the house haunted mansion and it says awaken your spirit and say i do to the black widow bride's most favorite brew the southern belle who aspired higher station has a smooth praline roast of her own creation so brew up a cup of this new orleans fine just beware of the spirit with an axe to grind and it's got a little teacup on the back super cute i absolutely love it i just love all haunted mansion stuff so and also this is crazy, okay? So I ordered these two last week, right? Today, I went on Instagram and I saw that they they have a special going on right now that if you buy both of these, you get another bag of whatever coffee that you want for 50% off. So make sure that you go do that. If you're not following them on Instagram, go ahead and do that so you can get a really good deal. Okay, so I talked about coffee for long enough. On to the products. Okay, so my 10-year-old... Right now, I'll start with him since he's the oldest. Right now, he is doing multiplication flashcards and division flashcards. That's okay, you don't have to get it. So multiplication and division flashcards. Multiplication, he's pretty familiar with, but you know, I wanna make sure that we are being, uh, you know, that we're drilling him with these so that they, um, so they can come quickly, come naturally to him without him having to stress at all whenever he's doing, you know, higher maths. Division, he's, a little bit more new to so um this week we've just been doing multiplication um and then so, so that's what he's doing right now for math and then he's also learning about um we're gonna be doing fractions using uh, learning about fractions um with and we're gonna be using measuring cups measuring spoons and different things like that from the kitchen um and throughout the year we're going to be working on learning how to do um measuring and measuring equivalents, you know. So, uh, and we're also gonna be working on currency with him, USD currency, you know, one being able to recognize it, but also being able to count it. He can count by fives and tens already. So he's already got the foundation for it. And I believe he can do all of, I believe he can identify all the currency, but we just wanna practice with it. So I'm gonna be getting a currency set. You can get those off of Amazon for about $10 for a full set. Um, and then, so that's what our, that's what his plan, that's what the plans are for math this year. We're also going to be doing decimals. So, um, whoops, didn't mean to bump that. Now, as far as English goes, he is already a fantastic reader. Um, so I just have him pick out a new book every month. This month it is a Captain Underpants book and that's fine. It's still reading. So he has to finish one book every month. He will also be doing a creative writing piece each month and self-editing. And then whenever he does his self-editing, then I'll also go over it, point out anything he missed and everything. We just, it's all about repetition. So I think, I feel like things don't have to be drilled through as much as they do in school sometimes. It's just, as long as the repetition and you keep doing it every once in a while, you're gonna, lose, you're going to keep that skill. And it's just like riding a bike. Even if you don't use it for a while, if you've, if you've drilled it enough, then you'll be able to use it forever. So, um, do not. Now, this is a Harry Potter Hogwarts Homework Cursive Handwriting Practice Workbook. Now, personally, I'm in the camp of cursive is useless. There's no use for it. I mean, it's really cool looking or nice looking or pretty, but there's no use for it. So, um, and people have made the, like this weird argument. They're like, well, then how will somebody sign their name? But the way that you sign your name is not just cursive, it's just however you write it. Like it's your own handwriting, it doesn't have to be cursive. And if you look at most people's signatures, it's just a bunch of wiggles, so. But the thing is, is he likes it. And it's good for his brain, it's good for his development and for his self-esteem, he feels really good about doing it. And you know, it's just nice handwriting practice. And so he's been blazing through this. I told him to just do a couple letters a day, but he's actually been doing several pages a day. So, okay, so, um, 
so he did he he did his name here and this was him basically copying what he's seen with um cursive this was before he had done any drills or anything but d-a-m-i-e-n so it's mostly that was his his guesstimate to spell damien okay so um it has capital a lowercase a through all of the letters of the alphabet then after you get through all the way from A to Z, then they have pages where they have a few words from the movie, mostly like Latin words and some of them are made up words, like ridiculous, obliviate, sectum sempra. So they do that for a while, you practice that. So practice, you know, practicing connecting each of the letters. But then after a while, it goes to quotes from the movie, favorite quotes. Um, Swish and flick, remember? Swish and flick by Professor Flitwick. Or, I go, don't you worry, Harry, you'll learn fast enough. Everyone starts at the beginning at Hogwarts, you'll be just fine. Rubius Hagrid. And it's got all those in there, so you know, he can really get in his practice. At the rate he's going right now, I believe that he'll be finished with this book by the end of the month, honestly. Um, so that's one of his goals. And we set our goals month by month. So that, you know, that it, keep, it helps keep me and the kids on track, but also um, it also makes sure that, you know, that we're not going too slowly, you know, because we have goals for the end of the year. We do want to try to make sure that they're learning the things that, you know, are considered standard for learning before they move on to the next grade. So, you know, and, and it, it, we can be kind of loose with it depending on their needs. For example, my daughter's dyslexic. So, I mean, obviously she's not going to be hitting the same reading milestones as other kids her age and that's fine and we've explained to her that it's it's fine it's just an, it's just a learning difference it's gonna take longer but she's gonna get there so anyway don't want to put too much stress on her in that sense okay so that's all for his English and um, math as far as history goes we are going um, by different time periods right now we are working on this month we are talking about prehistoric humans, what life was like for us back then. The next month it'll be about first empires. Well, actually before that, no. Next month is going to be about how we be went from a nomadic life to um, settling down with agriculture and making towns and stuff. Then the next month it's gonna be first empires, second round of empires, and we're moving on to the middle, middle ages, renaissance, you get the idea. So um, now for health, science, health slash science and history and stuff like that. They're both in the same thing. So they're just letting you know that ahead of time. Um, we also have back there on the wall, a um, Little Passports world map. I do recommend Little Passports. It's a great subscription. It's $15 a month and um, it comes with a large map and each month you get a new country to learn about. It comes with little like activities and stuff to do. So that's really fun. Um, we're trying out right now, what we're trying out is called Universal Yums. And uh, this is gonna be our first month with it. This month we're gonna be learning about the culture of Turkey. And uh, we got the super yum yum box, which is the biggest box that you can get. It's $40 a month and you get 20 um, different foods in it. So you get the foods and you also get a pamphlet, like, like a booklet, tells you all about that country, tells you some things about their culture, has some activities, has even some um, recipes. So I'm really, really excited for that. And they are excited as well. I think it should be shipping out next week. So yeah, they're learning about some current cultures through Universal Yums. And then um, we're doing history. Um, they, they're learning right now, they're learning the four cardinal directions and they're also learning the names of all seven continents, which he just actually identified right before I started this video, he did it without any assistance. And then um, he can identify our country and our state and um, we'll work more on that as we go throughout the year. And that leaves health and science. Now, as far as science goes, I only teach health to the kids, which some people count that as different than science. I do count it as science. And my husband takes care of other things, physics and that sort of thing, you know, works on little projects with them. We've got a volcano set that we're gonna be doing this year, like build your own volcano and, you know, different things like that. But I just teach health for them. Keep in mind that Maybe if you feel like you're not good at certain things like math, for example, there are lots of resources out there for you to use, which you can also write off as a tax write off. So keep in mind, anything that you're doing that you're, you're paying for, write that all down to see if you can get a tax write off for it at income tax return. Alan, I'm making videos. Hold on, okay.
All right, and then, um, so I've got this set here that I bought from Melissa and Doug. They've got some great resources. And it was $11 for the full set. And it's a little stand-up model. It's got all these pieces here, which I don't want to dump out. But it's got a little stand-up model here. Okay, so we got the skeletal system. And then it's also got, and it's magnetic, so you add the different layers. We've got the muscular system here. And we um, each month we're going to be going over, we're going to be learning the specifics of each system. Right now, for this first month, I'm just teaching them the names of the system so that they can point out. So skeletal system, muscular system, we've got vascular system, uh, got digestive system and stuff. So um, they're learning the names of the systems right now. And then each month it's going to be a new system that we're going to break down and learn um, for example, you know, like the mus muscle groups, then bones, the names of the digestive system, the path of the digestive system. So we're going to do that month by month. Um, and then um, my son, just my son, my daughter's not doing typing yet, but my son is also is using a typing program called Typing Agent on the computer. So uh, that's going to help him with his typing skills. He also wants to learn like editing and coding different things with the computer. So we're going to work on doing that soon as well. Now my daughter, like I said, she does the same science and um, world cultures and history as he does. But um, other than that, she's doing for math, instead of doing multiplication and division, she's using addition and subtraction flashcards. And um, like I said, she's dyslexic and she's not able to read yet, but she's learning with three letter words. Um, my baby colored on that, but three little letter words, um, dry erase flashcards, and these have really helped. She's already doing better and she's only been doing it for a few days. I've only had those for a few days. We also have a magnetic calendar coming in the mail for her so she can learn the months of the year. So um, those are our goals right now. That's what we're working on. And um, one thing I recommend is that if you don't have a Netflix account, get a Netflix account because they have so many documentaries and educational shows on there that you can utilize. So that's another thing that we use a lot of. If there's anything I forgot, I will add it in the comments. But if you have any questions for me, let me know in the comments and I will be happy to answer those. Um, that's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. If you like videos about the mom life, homeschooling life, or anything like that, uh, please subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Bye.